Hey guys, what's up? Ig Scoundrel here. Today we'll be covering Sky, and this is going to be a little bit different to my Lance Guide. I'm going to skip a lot of the basic stuff. I'm going to brush over skills. We're going to go straight towards build path, straight towards play styles, and tips and tricks from myself and other high-level Vainglory players. Now, Sky is one of the most hyper-mobile, high-skill cap carry heroes in the game. Her build versatility and her general gameplay style has made her a popular choice amongst professional players and high-level Vainglory players. She can pull off ridiculous 1v3s, and if you can master her, you're well on your way to becoming a high-level player, getting through those elos and making it towards Vainglorious. So, without further ado, let's move on. Now, before we move into um, her skills, I want to know, let you know that this guide will be cut up into two sections. I'll be talking about the two separate build paths that Sky has, one of which is weapon power, the other of which is the crystal power build. Both incredibly unique in their play styles, uh, and it's what makes Sky so fun as a hero. Now let's take a quick look at Sky's abilities. I know most of you will know these, but it should be a good exercise to refresh your memory. Her heroic perk is called Lock-On. Now that reveals targets, including targets that wish to stealth like Taka. So if they are locked on, they won't be able to go into full stealth. Also gets a big amount of movement speed moving towards the target and a little bit of movement speed moving away from that. Her A ability is called Forward Barrage. That gets 210% scaling on damage from crystal power and it gets 50% scaling on damage from weapon power so it has both crystal power and weapon power scalings for its damage it does however have other applications if you lock onto a target and you have built crystal power that target will take more damage from your forward barrage and if you have uh, got a weapon power build for sky if a target is moving towards you while, while using forward barrage that target will be slowed her B ability is known as Suri Strike. Now, this is what gives Sky a lot of her mobility. It has 100% scaling on the crystal power, but has no weapon power scaling on its damage at all. Increasing levels of Suri Strike will increase the duration of lock-on. So when you lock on with your passive, uh, it has a limited duration. If you don't refresh it, if you uh, put levels into Suri Strike, it will, um, it will increase that duration. It also resets the cooldown for forward barrage, and at its overdrive level, it gives you 100% refresh on the cooldown, so you get forward barrage instantaneously after using your Suri Strike. Her ultimate ability is called Death From Above. It has a 50% weapon uh, crystal power scaling on its damage, but no weapon power scaling again. Increasing the level in this will increase the range for lock-on, so your target won't be able to go out of range as quickly, and, and actually, as effect, that increases your range of Suri Strike. Uh, it also has an increasing percentage slow as you give more levels to it. So uh, it's got some utility built into it there as well. So we're going to look at Crystal Power Sky first. And we're going to start with the abilities and the sequence of ability choices. Now this is, in my opinion, the most optimal build for Sky. You take Forward Barrage first and you max it first. This has the best damage output. But remember, this kind of relies on you landing your forward barrage. You, when you use forward barrage, it locks you into a target direction, so you have to be very confident that, that target direction is going to get you maximum efficiency when using that ability. I then overdrive Suri Strike for the 100% cooldown reduction on the forward barrage and the duration increase on lock-on so that you get the extra damage out from the, uh, the crystal power build. The other build path you could take is if you were less confident with hitting your forward barrage is maxing Suri Strike first. There is nothing wrong with this, it just means you're going to have a little bit of a lull in terms of damage output. But, you can refresh the cooldown of Forward Barrage more readily, and you also have this build if you are needing more mobility, especially against something like a Cruel, and you want to be able to escape more readily earlier on. As you take a point in Suri Strike, it reduces the cooldown, so any reduction in cooldown to Suri Strike means you're going to be more mobile in team fights and more mobile in skirmishes. So these are two perfectly acceptable build paths for Sky. We don't max Death from Above simply because you don't get too much for putting another ability point into it, and realistically it's not off cooldown as regularly as Forward Barrage and Suri Strike, which makes Sky so powerful. Those are the two abilities that make Crystal Power Sky so powerful because those are the abilities that you need to land to have your damage output, and those are the abilities that you rely on for your mobility. 
Now let's have a look at item build paths. I will talk about individual items in detail, and at the end of this section I will give a suggested build path for Crystal Power Sky. But I'm just going to talk about things as they go through the game. So I'm going to talk about the item choices and why I would potentially pick those items up. Now, starting item buy, I would take two crystal bits and a halcyon potion, especially because I generally play Sky from the jungle, and therefore you don't have to worry too much about energy regeneration because you have the healing camps to do that for you. Uh, so I just worry about the raw damage output, which helps with my clear and early dueling. Then when I head back, I pick up two more crystal bits and sprint boots because this is the most gold efficient way to max your damage output before you pick up a tier three item. It's better than buying something like a heavy prism because you just get more bang for your buck. So uh, if you're looking to just really try and dominate around the four or five minute mark, getting four crystal bits just gives you a huge damage output. Now when it comes to tier 3 items, Sky has a lot of first item choices. Something like a Shatter Glass gives you the highest base damage output. This is great against people who are going to try and burst you, so you want to try and burst them first, like Taka, Black Feather for instance in some instant, some cases. Um, so you just want to try and burst them as quickly as possible. Uh, this is exactly what Shatter Glass offers you, just gives you the raw damage output that you can need to uh, completely obliterate someone before they can obliterate you. Now, this is my one of my personal favorite choices on Sky, especially because it provides so much teamfight control. And it's great versus things like Catherine. It's a must-buy versus Catherine. Really good against things like Cruel, because you just buy this, and they can't get to you. If you forward barrage them as they're running at you, they will never reach you. So it's a really good item to have in that instance. So buy this versus heroes that are trying to gap close to you um, and just try and stun you, or, you know, like Cruel would reduce your damage output. Uh, some people actually really love buying a Eve of Harvest first on Sky. This is great for elongated teamfights when you're trying to play a sustain war against something like Scarf, who's going to have an elongated damage output. This is very good against those types of heroes. So uh, Eve of Harvest, if you're getting locked into long teamfights where trying to survive as long as possible is the absolute necessity. Not good against burst heroes because you're never going to get the the uh, um, you're never going to get the output of the Eve of Harvest against burst heroes because you're not going to have enough time to get the damage output to regenerate. And finally, Broken Myth. I, I don't mind Broken Myth as a first item, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're absolutely dominating. The issue with Broken Myth is it's very good at pushing, pushing an advantage, but if you aren't uh, ahead or you don't have the complete control, you are never going to stack up enough to, to see the real benefits of having those Broken Myth stacks. So it, it can be a real issue, uh, especially when some people choose to go that first against things like Taka, because they'll just burst you before you get any output from it. So those are the first item choices. Now let's have a quick look at core offensive item choices. The two cores are Eve of Harvest and Broken Myth. Um, they should be in your build almost every single game. And then you have that choice to alternate between a Shatter Glass if you're just looking for the pure burst damage against things like Taka, for instance. Or you're going to switch that over to something like a Frostburn, which is used specifically against trying to kite. So you're trying to kite versus a, you know, a Black Feather, you're trying to kite versus a Cruel, you're trying to kite versus a Catherine. So those are your core offensive item choices. You should always have those in your build. Now we've looked at offense, let's have a quick look at defense as well. This is a core defensive item, Aegis. This is practically core on every single carry. Um, you get that reflex block in there. Because of Sky's mobility, because you know she's not quite a Celeste who completely outranges everybody, she will need to get up close and personal sometimes, and having this can be a lifesaver. So definitely, definitely have an Aegis in your build. Now you have the choice when you're looking at armor, whether the weapon power carry is melee or the weapon power carry is ranged. If you're getting threatened by a black feather, by a uh, glaive, for instance, anything like that, a rona, then having an atlas pauldrons on the sky can be fantastic. If they get up to you and you atlas pauldrons them and then you just kite away, they're not going to do the burst damage necessary. This is a fantastic item to have on board against melee weapon power carries. On the flip side of the coin, you have the full metal jacket, which is better against ranged weapon power carries. So, for instance, if you know that you're not going to get next to a Ringo, you know that you're not going to get next to a Vox or a Gwen, you want to be able to use this to give you the sustain necessary to try and out-damage them or survive in a team fight. So this is where the full metal jacket has its benefits over the Atlas Pauldrons. It just provides more flat armor, but doesn't have that attack speed slow. But if you're not getting up close and personal with someone, the attack speed slow doesn't make that much difference anyway. So let's take a look at total item build paths for the sky. This is what I would suggest is a very basic 
standpoint if you just don't know what you're building just can go for this without too much of an issue you can replace the shatter glass for the frost burn if you're needing to kite or you know you're just wanting to uh, control team fights a little better replace the full metal jacket for the atlas pauldrons if you're going up against melee weapon power carries and something that's up for debate in quite a lot of instances is replacing the halcyon charges with the journey boots you pick journey boots if you need the extra mobility on top of what you've already got and you pick the halcyon charges if you need the cooldown reduction and the energy regeneration now before i close on this there are people who do like to go for crystal power items so if you are really tempted to do that and it can be quite risky because if anybody that has any form of weapon power gets to you you're probably dead you can take away the atlas pauldrons or full metal jacket and put in the remainder of either the frost burn or the shatter glass that you didn't get as the first item choice so you will end up with boots aegis Frostburn, Shattered Glass, Eve of Harvest, and Broken Myth. Cooldown reduction like Clockwork or Echo, they are just not that good on Sky, so you don't need to get them. Um, so you can sometimes take out the armor and put in a fourth crystal power item if you're thoroughly confident that whoever is the weapon power carry isn't going to get close enough to you to deal damage. So we've looked at Crystal Power Sky, let's look at the other side of the coin, and that is the Weapon Power Sky. Now, due to the low percentage scaling on Forward Barrage, this is realistically the only way in terms of ability points to build Sky at this point in time. You max Suri Strike first, giving you the increased lock-on duration and increasing your mobility, which is very important to Weapon Power Sky. And then you overdrive C to give you the increased range. You know, basically increasing the range of your Suri Strike because your lock-on range goes up indefinitely too. Realistically, maxing A gets you absolutely nothing because of that low weapon power ratio and the slow same stays the same regardless of what rank forward barrage is. So now looking at the build paths in terms of items, it's very standard weapon power carry start. Weapon Blade, Swift Shooter, Halcyon Potion. You've heard, you've heard it, you've seen it, you love it. It's the same thing. Uh, but looking at the overall build paths, there is less variation, I would say, than the crystal power. Let's have a look here. Again, this is a kind of a standard build path. The three core items are Sorrow Blade, Breaking Point, and Tyrant's Monocle, probably built in that order, to be completely honest. But then there are interchangeable factors here as well. Again, the same reasoning for these interchangeable factors stands Atlas Polder for Full Metal Jacket. We talked about it earlier. There is a difference here with the Halcyon Chargers and the Journey Boots, however, because you don't have Eve of Harvest in your kit and you still do need energy to make your skills work in a team fight. It can be more beneficial to take the Halcyon Chargers over the Journey Boots when building Weapon Power Sky just for the fact that you don't have energy regeneration built into your kit because, again, you're not building Crystal Power, you don't have that Eve of Harvest. But Journey Boots are equally as good if you are looking for that extra ability and you might need it versus things like cruel you'll need it versus things like black feather because you won't have the frost burn for instance the final change here is potentially taking out an armor item for another tyrant's monocle you'll see this on a lot of weapon power carries this is pretty standard the old build path used to be a breaking point double tyrant's monocle but because of the changes to the forward barrage the lower weapon power scaling uh, it just isn't worth it anymore. This is just the better damage output, relying more on your basic attacks than you are on your forward barrage. So we're going to end up the guide here with tips and tricks for Sky, and then we're also going to look at her hero matchups. Now, one of the biggest questions people ask me is, how do I land my Death From Above correctly? Well, let's look at the first instance of Death From Above, which is the targeted circular Death From Above. It's pretty simple. A circle will appear around the target when you click Death From Above. You click inside that circle to achieve the result, as you can see on the screen here. The more complex version of Death From Above is when you want to get the line, uh, the sort of the zoning tool that a lot of people use to block people's escape or stop and engage. That same circle is very relevant here. If I click outside the circle, I will get a line that is perpendicular or at a tangent to the point of the radius of the circle that I've clicked. Now that might sound confusing to you that people haven't got sort of experience within maths or, or along those lines, but let me try and explain it. I will click here and the line will appear here. I know that is going to happen, that is my tangent, that is my perpendicular line. How about if I want to click somewhere else in the circle, what would the line look like? Well, it just rotates. It always remains at 90 degrees to the point of the outside the radius of the circle that you clicked, and it will rotate like this. So just imagine that, that um, death from above line 
as you're clicking outside of the circle. And it, it, it counts for when it's further away too. It just remains at right angles to the point of the radius of the circle that you clicked. The best way of describing it is just looking at the image. That is what the line from the death and above will always look like when you click at different points outside of the circle. Another tip and trick that I uh, keep getting asked about is how to use my Siri Strike properly. Now, Siri Strike can be used in a number of creative ways. As long as your target is locked on and next to a wall, you can Siri Strike over that wall. Or if you have a locked on target that is already over the wall that you want to get past, you can just Siri Strike straight over the wall as well. So it can be used in creative ways like that. Another really cool thing you can do with Siri Strike is if you kite your target back and completely juke them the other way, you can often feel, leave them having used their gap closing ability already and then you just get back the other side of them and can land that forward barrage instantaneously it's a really really cool trick to be able to use and it's very very good against things like cruel black feather and that's why maxing b sometimes in those matchups is, is just honestly fantastic the last little tip i want to talk about is positioning and use of death from above um, which can be quite difficult to new Sky players, but will come with time and experience. I'm going to give you two examples to get you started, and hopefully you can see how they apply in other areas. Say I have three enemies approaching uh, from the top area through the mustache brush there. I would use a circular targeted death from above on the closest enemy to form a choke point so that they couldn't move through the death from above without having used a reflex block or a crucible, meaning I would feel less threatened. There wouldn't be that much threat applied to me. They'd either have to go round or force to walk all the way through my death from above. The next option would be, say they are approaching from the bottom there, I would use a line death from above to completely cut off one of the enemies from the rest of his team, forcing the other two to again have to use some sort of reflex block or crucible to move through that line while we deal with the enemy that has been completely cut off from his team, meaning that I have separated one of the enemy members, allowing my team to potentially deal with them, and then the enemy team either have to make the choice about taking damage of de from death from above or being left by themselves and potentially leaving their teammate to die and finally let's have a look at the hero matchups that sky has to go up against now these are all subjective and it really depends on what items you build as well as to how bad they can be uh, but honestly one of the main things to take away from sky is that if played correctly she practically has no bad matchups she actually if played 100 percent perfectly can be any hero in the game now, this is a very subjective list, but one of the main things to take away is that Sky has big issues with people with high mobility and high burst damage, and that's why Taka really like lies at the very top of the lists as counters for Sky, because he's one of those heroes that is very hard to lock down and has a lot of burst damage into his kit, so it's something that Sky naturally doesn't deal with very well. However, against low mobility targets and targets that really don't have any kind of gap closing ability of their own, they are easy prey for Sky in all senses of the word. So um, this is, again, a, a list that honestly is just based on my personal experience, but you know, take, a, take it with a grain of salt. Sky can be practically every hero in the game, and that's the main thing I want you to take away from this, that if you play this hero correctly, she will do right by you. She is incredibly good at solo carrying, incredibly good at 1v3ing, and like I said, doesn't actually have too many bad matchups in the grand scheme of things. And there we have it, guys, another guide under the belt. I hope it hasn't been too long for you, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, or whatever it is the kids say these days, um, because I really appreciate it, and I, I really enjoy all the support. And um, yeah, make sure you let me know what guides you'd like to see. I've got a lot of requests to get through. I'll hopefully be releasing another one next week, as long as my, along with my other series that I'm doing right now, which is kind of like reviews and let's plays. Um, but yeah, this has been really fun to make, and hopefully it was informative enough to be uh, beyond the beginner lance guide that I had made previously. Um, but yeah, see you next time, guys, and thank you so much for watching.